it might affect them verse 18 but it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing and not only when i am present with you verse 19 my little children of whom i travail in bus again until christ be formed in you verse 20 i desire to be present with you now and to change my voice for i stand in doubt of you those are the precious verses we're looking at today let's divide the message to three parts the message is traveling until believers be fully formed in christ traveling again traveling in prayer traveling again but traveling in ministry traveling again traveling in the preaching and teaching of the word until they be fully formed in christ and until these believers are fully formed in the lord three things we're looking at number one the apostle received as an angel as an angel of god look at uh, Galatians there, chapter 4, verse 12. Brethren, I beseech you, I beg of you, I plead with you. Be as I am, for I am as ye are. Ye have not injured me at all. Verse 13, ye know how through infirmity of the flesh I preach the gospel unto you as of the First, in verse 14, and my temptation, which was in my flesh, he despised not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus, the apostle received as an angel of God. Three things we're looking at here. Number one, recommitment to Paul's pattern of apostleship. Number two, remembrance of Paul's preaching despite affliction. Number three, response to Paul's persuasiveness as to an angel. Look at number one there. Number one, recommitment to Paul's pattern of apostleship. He declares this in verse 12. Look at that verse 12. It says, brethren, it was referring to the Galatians because he had preached the gospel to them. They had repented of their sins. They had believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as the Savior, as the only Savior, as the sufficient Savior, as the transforming Savior. Because of that, he called them brethren. He said, I beseech you, I beg of you, I plead with you, be as I am, for I am as ye are. Be as I am, for I am as ye are. What could he mean by that? The Galatians were Gentiles. Paul the Apostle was a Jew. And as a Jew, normally and naturally, the Jews had nothing to do with the Gentiles. Their ways of life were different. Their pattern of life totally different. And the things they ate, and the things they drank, and their culture, and their lifestyle, even their religious background, totally different now paul the apostle forsook all the mosaic law all the mosaic rituals and he became as a gentile and he did not distinguish himself anymore or differentiate himself anymore from the gentiles he went to them 
he lived with them he preached to them he ate what they ate he did not count anything common or unclean and he abandoned the mosaic law he abandoned all the lifestyle of the circumcised people that's what he made he said be as i am for i am as she are when i came to you i dropped all of judaism i dropped all of circumcision i dropped everything belonging to the jews now because of that you were converted because you saw i declare to you that the gospel is not jewish or gentile it is for everyone and christ is for everyone and you believe that you became new creatures in christ your life changed now i became as you are like a gentile now i stay in the grace of god i preach the grace of god be as i am i forsook all of judaism be as i am i depreciated i destroy the very foundation of circumcision be as i am I look up to Christ, I depend on Christ, I remain in the grace of Christ alone, be as I am. I become a new creature. I don't look at this is gentle and this is you, be as I am. My life is centered and my life is focused on Christ and Christ alone. Be as I am because I have been as you are. I became like a gentle. Look at first corinthians chapter 9 i'm reading from verse 20 it says unto the jews i became as a jew that i might gain the jews to them that are under the law as under the law that i might gain them that are under the law verse 21 it says to them that are without law like the gentiles like the galatians to you that are without the law of Moses, I came to you and as you are, so I am. And so I want you to be as I am as well. It says to them that are without law, as without law, be not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. You know what he's saying? I became like you are that I might gain you, win you, bring you to Christ so that I do not allow the Mosaic law or the circumcision or all those rituals to stand as a stumbling block between you and your salvation. I became like you are to save you, to serve you, to win you and to convert you and to bring you to Christ, be as I am. To also win me be as i am to to uh, take and to keep my interest i have sacrificed i have denied myself and now you are also to sacrifice and deny yourself i'm as you are be as i am look at verse 22 there in verse 22 to the weak became i as weak that i might gain the weak i am made all things to all men that i might by all means save some verse 23 it tells us and this i do for the gospel's sake that is i abandon the mosaic law i abandon the jewish law i abandon all the culture of the past this i do for the gospel's sake that i might be partaker thereof with you galatians chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 14 in galatians chapter 6 verse 14 but god forbid that i should glory save in the cross of our lord jesus christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and i to the world galatian believers brethren be as i am 
I'm crucified to the world, and the world is crucified to me. All those things that glitter like gold in the world, I want none of them. All the things that tempt people, and they want to submit and surrender their lives to the world, I want none of them as I am dead to the world. So be like me, and be dead to the world. Already, you see, I'm dead to the comments of the people in the Jewish nation. You might say, Paul, the apostle, what's he doing? He has abandoned Moses. He has abandoned circumcision. He has abandoned all those rituals. He has abandoned all the things that he used to do. He's now a new man. He said, I don't mind that because I am dead to the world. I am crucified to the world. I'm like you are, like a gentile now, so as to bring the gospel to you. Be like I am. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth any sin, nor uncircumcision, but the new creature. Verse 16, it says, and as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. Let's look at number two here. Number two, the remembrance of Paul's preaching despite affliction. Look at verse 13 of Galatians chapter 4. You know, how through infirmity of the flesh, I preached the gospel unto you at the Fourth, he said, you must remember when I came to the province of Galicia, there were difficulties, there were challenges, there was persecution, there was affliction, there was infirmity, but through the infirmity of the flesh, I didn't say, I can't uh, go there, I can't reach them. There are thorns on the path, there are pebbles on the road, and the road there is loopy and the tree and there are dangers over there I came in spite of all the persecution in spite of all the predicament in spite of the infirmity in spite of the affliction how I preach the gospel to you at the force with all those challenges actually everywhere Paul the Apostle went there were some difficulties and challenges and afflictions but he didn't mind look at first Thessalonians chapter 1 reading from verse 5 for our gospel came not unto you in watch only but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. We acted as if there wasn't any problem. We acted as if there wasn't any challenge. We acted as if there wasn't any pain. We acted as if there was no affliction and no infirmity for your sake look at verse 6 in verse 6 and ye became followers of us and of the lord having received the word in much affliction in much opposition with much infirmity with all the pressure and the pain that came upon us we kept on going and we kept on preaching and we kept on pushing because your salvation was very much important to us with joy, the joy of the Holy Ghost. And then in verse 7, in verse 7 it says, And ye became followers of us, in verse 7, so that ye were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. The gospel came to you, and you saw our sincerity and you saw our spirituality and you saw our sanctification and you saw our transparency and you saw that we were resilient we didn't mind the problem or the pressure or the affliction or the infirmity or the persecution when you saw that you became examples to you and followers of us and to all that believe in Achaia and in Macedonia then in verse 8 in verse 8 
he tells us for from you sounded out the word of the lord not only in macedonia and achaia but also in every place your faith to god word is spread abroad so that we need not spires in spite of the sons of the way because it yielded the conversion the salvation the transformation of those gentiles they taught to god from idols to serve the living and true god then in verse 10 in verse 10 it says and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead even jesus which delivered us from the wrath to come to see multitudes of people delivered from the wrath to come from eternal punishment in eternal hell whatever affliction whatever persecution whatever infirmity we endure so we can bring that life soul saving gospel unto the people it's worth it we're looking at uh, number number three here number three response to paul's persuasiveness as an angel it tells us in galatians chapter 4 verse 14 and my temptation which was in my flesh ye despise not what does that mean uh, paul the apostle as he went about preaching the gospel there were times they stoned him and it left some scars on his body there were times they beat him and it led some weakness in his body there were times he was shipwrecked and that led some mark on his body and when you saw him you will see that this has been a persecuted man a beating man you will see that this man is a stoned man he had been stoned and you see that this man has gone through a lot and it was telling on his body yet in spite of that he went on preaching the gospel and he didn't mind that there were six cars on the face or six cars in different parts of the body or they will see that it's not like you know as agile as um, as able as physically fit as a teenager because of what he had gone through but all the same he said my trials my temptations which was in my flesh he despised not no rejected but you received me as an angel of god even as christ jesus that is they received the word those who preach him as they would have received if an angel had come from heaven and spoken to them directly they received the gospel he was preaching to them as if christ himself would descend from heaven and preach that gospel all unto them as they will not argue with Christ they didn't argue with with Paul the Apostle as they will not argue with an angel of God they did not argue with Paul the Apostle because they received him they received this message they received this ministry History. They received this ministration as if an angel of God had come to them, preaching to the First Thessalonians chapter two, reading from verse thirteen. In First Thessalonians chapter two, verse thirteen, for this cause also we thank God without ceasing because when when ye received the word of god which ye heard of us you didn't look at our physical appearance at our weakness physically you didn't look at anything worldly anything earthly anything on earth anything of the world anything natural anything human but you heard the word of God, you received the word of God, which he had of us. You received it not as the word of men, but 
as it is in truth the word of God which effectually walketh also in you that believe that's how you received the word of god galatians chapter 3 verse 19 in galatians chapter 3 verse 19 wherefore then service the lord it was added because of transgressions till the siege shall come to whom the promise was made and it was ordained it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator when the when the law came to the children of israel angels took part in the proclamation dissemination and in the telling them of that law and then paul the apostle said like you see now in chapter four when i brought the gospel to you it was like the angels brought the law to the children of israel and without arguing with the children of israel or with the angel how why when how should that be you received the same when i gave you the gospel as if i was an angel of God. I pray that that same attitude will continue to manifest in Jesus' name. I thought that quarters will say amen. amen. Let's come to number two now. Number two, their affection reflected in accepting the gospel. We're coming to Galatians chapter 4, verse 15. Where then is the blessedness ye speak of? And Paul the Apostle reflected on the blessedness of the past, their acceptance of the past, and their readiness of the past in accepting the word completely as they reflected in this section. We're looking at number one, the former affection through God's grace. Number two, the failing attitude of the graceful Galatians. Number three, the fervent admonitions not for their good. Let's look at number one. Number one, the former affection through God's grace. It tells us in Galatians chapter 4 verse 15, it says, well, it's then the blessedness you speak of. For I bear you record that if it had been possible, ye would have plucked out your, eye, your own eyes and have given them to me. That's the love they had for him before. That's the affection they had for him before. They so appreciated him and were so grateful to God that a man shall come and show them the way to life eternal. That a man shall come and show them how to be delivered out of the darkness of gentle religion and to be brought into the light of the gospel of the grace of God. They so loved him. They so liked him. They so appreciated him. They were so glued to him in affection and intimacy that if it were possible if he needed eye transplant they would have plugged out their eyes and would have given unto him the same thing with the children of Israel when they first heard of the lord and the goodness of the lord but the sin faded away that's why paul the apostle now was saying I could tell the blessedness the affection and the fellowship and the intimacy in the past where is that now where has that gone jeremiah chapter 2 reading from verse 1 in jeremiah chapter 2 verse 1 moreover the word of the lord came unto me saying look at verse 2 in verse 2 it says go and cry in the ears of jerusalem saying thus says the lord i remember thee the kindness of thy youth the love of thine espousers when thou wentest after me in the wilderness i remember that long long ago in a land that was not so look at verse 3 in verse 3 israel was holiness unto the lord the lord looked at him and he said 
things are different now with you, Israel. When I look at the, at the past and I look at the blessedness, at the joy of following the Lord, at the devotion in following the Lord, at the obedience of the past, and as your attachment unto me, and I see you now, I can only say Israel was holiness unto the Lord. Actually, what the Lord desires, what the Lord demands, what the Lord delights in is not that we will be like that then and not like that now. He wants Israel to be holiness unto the Lord now. He wants the church to be holiness unto the Lord now. He wants you as a member of the body of Christ to be holiness unto the Lord now. He wants that same affection. He wants that same first love. He wants that same devotion. He wants that same transparency. And he wants you to remain holiness unto the Lord every day and every moment at every crossroad and wherever you may be, whatever may be happening. Israel was holiness unto the Lord and the first fruits of the increase all that devour him shall offend evil shall come upon them says the lord in matthew chapter 24 reading from verse 10 matthew chapter 24 we're looking at verse 10 and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another in verse 11 it says and many false prophets shall rise and deceive many then in verse 12 it says and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold he does not want our love to wax cold he wants us to continue and he wants us to keep on loving him with all our heart with all our soul and with all our mind he does not want to use past tense for salvation for sanctification for our holiness for our service for our affection for our intimacy unto him he wants it to be the ever present experience that the way we loved him in the past we still love him like that today but because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold then he says in verse 13 but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved what a revelation that uh, the joy of yesterday is not enough for today. The faithfulness of yesteryears, that's not enough for today. And the commitment and the consecration and the love of God of yesteryears is not enough for today. It's not an historical experience. 19 such and such, 20 such and such, I was born again present day expectation of the Lord is a present life in holiness and righteousness. I remember many years ago I was sanctified that's not enough he wants a present testimony a heart that is purified a heart that is circumcised a heart that is holy totally yielded and submissive to him on the altar I, I, I used to have a high standard a high standard of living for God that's not enough he wants that high standard of the word of God to be maintained until now and until he comes that's why he said that he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. In verse 14, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, in all the world, to the end of the world. Whatever is happening, there's pandemic, there's problem, there's plague, there's disease, there's a poverty there's economy there's this and that whatever is happening this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations unto all nations unto all nations and then shall the end come it says we must increase in our reach we must increase in our touch we must increase in our penetrating our world with the gospel that this gospel of the kingdom must be preached shall be preached and 
you must you must search to know how you know there are people that will say all i'm doing this is all i know it that's not enough in the world today this all i know this what i have learned things are changing and you must change if you don't change you become irrelevant i remember what we were teaching in those days i mean 30 years ago i mean 40 years ago i was teaching the normal normal teaching we used to use the chalkboard and we used to use our chalks and dust and everything that thing doesn't work today in education if you don't know computer today if you don't know how to use the internet today if you don't know how to send your lectures your lesson through internet today if you do not know how to put your grades now on the media that those students will just you know they, they, they connect and they get their result you are not relevant today if you are the teacher of 20 years ago 30 years ago and it is the old old method you will be out of service the same thing with the gospel as we have the gospel now and jesus himself said that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations now the way um, nebuchadnezzar uh, did it if he wanted to send his uh, testimony all over the world he'll write it down he'll put a horse there and then somebody will ride the horse and go to all those provinces you cannot do that today you use the media now and those who are sitting back in our church and say deeper life what are we doing now what do you what jesus wants done we're sending the gospel to all the world come on board and join us and whatever you can do bring your time bring your skill bring your money bring everything this gospel shall be preached in all the world and many will come to the lord in every nation through you through me and through us together in jesus name and somebody there will say yeah. amen it will be done and you'll be part of it I will be part of it. I will be part of it. The Lord bless the work of your hand for the salvation of souls in Jesus' name. And look at number two here. Number two here, the failing attitude of the graceful Galatians. Failing attitude. Look at Galatians chapter 4, verse 16. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Now, the attitude of uh, the Galatians uh, was winning. It was declining. It was going down. He said, I remember the blessedness of your love, your affection for me at the beginning. But now... I told you the truth. Now I told you that Christ Jesus is the only way. I told you he is the only Savior. I told you nobody can come to the Heavenly Father. Nobody can get to God. Nobody can get to heaven except by Christ and Christ alone that the law of Moses will not get you there. Turning over a new leaf will not get you there. Religious observances will not get you there. Self-righteousness will not get you there. That's the truth. And now the blessedness that I saw before that you could pluck out your eyes and give that to me. I can't see that anymore. It's like now you are withdrawing yourself from me. I can't even see you. And I can't even talk to you. Where are you? He says, am I therefore become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. Now, that's about Galatians and Paul the Apostle. Let's talk about ourselves. Do you am I becoming your enemy? Because I tell you that without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. That's the word of God. Am I becoming your enemy by saying that blessed are the pure in heart? Because only they shall see God. Am 
am I becoming your enemy by telling you that if you are going to get to heaven, he gave himself for us that he might purify us from all sin and then he will so cleanse us and purchase to himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. I might become your enemy because I tell you that if you are indolent, if you are idle, if you are not working for God, if you are just like that, and Jesus meets you when he comes like that that you will be a person that will be poor all through eternity there will be no reward at all I might become your enemy because I tell you wake up and reconsecrate yourself again and everything you laid on the altar before that you have taken away from the altar bring it back to the altar and let your consecration be beyond what it was many years ago and with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, you love the Lord without reservation, without a rival, and without anyone to compete with your love for God. That's the truth I told you that will make you acceptable to God, that will make you keep in the love of God. And like Paul the Apostle asked the Galatians, I am I'm also asking you, therefore, am I become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth, we will not be enemies. We'll be in unity together in Jesus' name. As I'm pulling it up, you are joining and you are pulling it up with me in Jesus' name. As I'm running, as I'm declaring, as I'm persuading, as I'm saying that this is the will of God, even your sanctification, you will say yes to everything. You will say amen to everything. Your heart will be aligned to everything in Jesus' name. Uh, look at uh, First Kings uh, chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 20. First Kings chapter 21, reading from verse 20. And Ahab said to Elijah, as thou find, found me, O mine enemy. Now, those Galatians were now acting and talking and behaving like Ahab. Ahab saw Elijah and he said, As thou found me, O mine enemy. Now, Ahab, why did you say that? How could you say that? Elijah was a prophet of God and he was sent of God to declare the word to the nation and he wanted to bring the nation back to God. How could such a person be an enemy to you? He said, he answered, I have found thee. He didn't argue. Elijah did not say, am I your enemy? He wasn't afraid. Am I your enemy? He wasn't feeling lonely. You are the most important number one in our nation. And then you count me as your enemy. How could you say that? Elijah said, yes, I have found you. Because thou hast sold on to walk evil in the sight of the Lord. I pray that the people God is using to touch our lives, to transform our lives, and to get us ready for the coming of the Lord will not count them as enemies in Jesus' name. Look at number three here. Number three here, the five age admonitions not for their good. In Galatians chapter 4, reading from verse 17, the zeal of slavery affects you. The Judaizers, the people that promoted circumcision, and the people that spoke about uh, the law, Moses, they were very, very zealous. They'll cross land, they'll cross the sea, they will use any means to bring their error and their falsehood onto the people. They zealously affect you but not well. It's not for your good. They will cut you away from the Savior. They will cut you away from the sanctifier. They will cut you away from the power that you need in your life. They will cut you away from concentrating on the way that leads to heaven and it will be they take the precious thing, the gift and the grace and the goodness of God away from your hand and yet they do it lovingly. 
lovingly. If, they, if somebody loves you and is going to take salvation from you, it's going to take holiness from you. He loves you, always interacting with you. He wants to bring you down from the top where you are, where you identified with Christ and you are seated in heavenly places with Christ. He wants to bring you to the low level of the law of Moses and yet he's doing it zealously affe affectionately with smile with laughter and with good attitude but that's not for your good we need to understand uh, the difference between Paul the apostle and all those deceivers that were going to throw them down from the tower where they were they zealously affect you but not well yea they will exclude you they will exclude you with their smile they exclude you from the salvation coming from calvary with their smile and with their affection they'll exclude you from the sin that christ has purchased for us on the cross of calvary with their smile with their affection they will exclude you from heaven that's the important thing to consider they will will exclude you that ye might affect them all they want is for you to please them for you to make them happy at the expense of your losing heaven make them happy at the expense of your being caught away from christ look at verse 18 in verse 18 but it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing if you're going to affect anyone make it for their good what have i contributed to their lives have i raised them up how have i lifted them up what zeal have i given them what commitment have i given them if you're going to be friends with anyone you must ask yourself what's she adding to my life what's she adding to my life how is she helping me how is she making me to come nearer and nearer and nearer to christ it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing and not only when i am present with you uh, let, let's look at uh, romans chapter 10 reading from verse 2 romans chapter 10 we're looking at verse 2 for i bear them record that they have the zeal of god but not according to knowledge they have the zeal of god for the law for moses for circumcision for self-righteousness for rituals for animal sacrifice they have a great zeal of god but not according to knowledge the christ had died did he factor the death of Christ to their zeal? Christ has provided salvation. They didn't factor the, the, the provision of Christ's salvation into their religion. They're still zealous, as zealous as in Leviticus, as zealous as in Deuteronomy, but they overlook Calvary and they overlook salvation and they overlook the savior and they overlook what god himself has said this is my beloved son hear ye him and any soul that will not hear him will be cut off from the people that was their problem the lord does not want us to have zeal without knowledge zeal without truth zeal without the gospel zeal without salvation zeal without the provision of christ from calvary and i pray our zeal will go along with the word of god in jesus name we're coming to point number three point number three traveling ambassadors refocused on awakening to his grace we're coming to galatians chapter 4 verse 19 my little children of whom i travail in birth again until christ be formed in you what does that mean it's giving us a picture of christ standing at the door of their heart and knocking that if anyone opens the door i will come in unto him i will dwell there i will abide there i will sup with him 
and fellowship with him. Now, he's using the picture that Christ was on the inside of them. But Christ had become powerless, impotent, like baby Christ. And it's not like a transforming Christ, a teaching Christ, an effective Christ, a mighty Christ, a powerful Christ inside them. And he says, now I travel. Now I pursue it. Now I call you. Now I pray until Christ becomes fully formed in you, mighty in you, powerful in you, that Christ will be what he is now with all his qualities and attributes and he will live big in you once again, the Christ of truth, the Christ of knowledge, the Christ of power, the Christ of revelation, the Christ of vision, the Christ of mighty enablement. I'm praying, I'm traveling until Christ be fully formed in you now. Three things we're looking at. Number one, traveling until followers be fully persuaded. Number two, teaching until faith be firmly perfected. Number three, toiling until the faithful be finally preserved. Look at number one. Number one, traveling until the followers be fully persuaded so that they are no more up and down, in and out, sound and unsound, knowledgeable and ignorant. He wanted them to come to a level they're fully persuaded and nothing will change them again when galatians chapter 4 verse 19 my little children of whom i travel in path again until christ be formed in you and then in verse 20 it says i desire to be present with you now and to change my voice for i stand in doubt of you look at ephesians chapter 4 reading from verse 14 ephesians chapter 4 verse 14 that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro carried about with every wind of doctrine by the sledge of men and cunning craftiness whereby the lie in which to deceive then in verse 15 it says but speaking the truth in love he may grow up that's what he wanted for the galatians that's what god wants for us that ye may grow up in all things in doctrine grow up in doctrine in deeds grow up in deeds in the demonstration of your understanding and your partaking of the gospel grow up in all things in love in devotion to god in consecration to god grow up in all things in the service of god in reaching out further eh, to the people beyond your culture that will grow up in all things which is the head even christ where will grow up every one of us by the grace of god in the knowledge of the lord will grow up up his name Hebrews chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 8. Hebrews 13, verse 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, the grace of salvation the grace of sanctification, the grace of for steadfastness. It is a good thing that the heart be established with grace and not with meats which have not profited them that have been occupied 
therein. We're coming to number two here. Number two here, teaching until our face be firmly perfected. Teaching until our faith be firmly perfected. Hey, look at um, First Thessalonians chapter 3, and we're reading from verse 10. Night and day praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. That was the desire of Paul the Apostle, that anyway he went to any fellowship assembly congregation he went he wanted to see their face that he might perfect that which was lacking in their faith look at verse 13 there in verse 13 there to the end he may establish your hearts on blameable in holiness before god even our father at the coming of our lord jesus christ with all his saints we're looking at colossians chapter 1 reading from verse 28 colossians chapter 1 verse 28 when we preach one in every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus that we may perfect present every man perfect in Christ Jesus verse 29 in verse 29 where unto I also labor striving according to his walking which walketh in me mightily I pray that it will walk also in you mightily in Jesus name Number three here, we're toiling until the faithful be finally preserved. Toiling and walking until the faithful be finally preserved. In Philippians chapter 1 verse 10, that she may approve things that are excellent, that she may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Amen. We don't know Christ will come, but every day and every moment we so live our lives in the grace of God that we are sincere and without offense, offense towards God, offense toward man, when without offense till the day of Christ. In verse 11, verse 11, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and the praise of God. I pray you stand firm, you stay committed, and you stay stable and steadfast until the very end in Jesus' name. If that's going to happen, Revelation chapter 2, verse 25. Revelation chapter 2, we're looking at verse 25. But that which ye have already, that which ye have already, Christ knows we have something already. The angels know we have something already. Paul the apostle knew that the Galatians had something already, but the Judaizers were trying to take that out of their hands. I have something. You have salvation, you have something. You have sanctification, you have something. You have the service of God in your hand, you have something. You have the love for God, you have something uh, that which ye have already. Hold fast till I come. Who is going to hold fast? Steadfast until the end. Where are you? Hold fast until he comes. And the grace of God abide your life in jesus name let's rise up now and talk to the lord in prayer that good thing that we have the salvation the experience the power the glory the godliness the presence of god every good thing we have hold fast until it comes
Brethren, let's talk to the Lord. The Lord has spoken to us this day. He has made his mind known unto us. He has challenged our faith, challenged our commitment, challenged our determination to follow through the mind and the will of God. The Lord is telling you and me today that we need to re-examine our commitment unto him and the things we are ready to give in order for the gospel to reach a wider audience. Not only that, what we are ready to give in order for those who have already been born again to be fully formed, to become fully formed in Christ. We need to recommit ourselves to the pattern of the apostleship. To the pattern of the apostleship. What apostleship is the Lord telling us? The apostleship of Paul and the apostleship of our Father in the Lord. His commitment, his determination to do all things that all men might be saved. His commitment to follow through the great commission to make sure that people are fully formed, doing every seed, that all who come to the knowledge of Christ are not, do not remain babes in the faith, but they become matured men, mature women, who themselves can be used to reach out to others. The Lord is calling us. He said, brethren, I beseech you as I am, for I am as ye are. Ye have not injured me at all. Ye have not injured me at all. Paul the apostle said, well, you may be wondering what is happening to me and begin to look down on my physique and saying his words. I more, command more respect than his bodily present, but all the same, I bear this mark as a badge of honor, all that I have. All the marks I have in my body, I bear them as a badge of honor because I'm in the business of my Savior. I'm in the business of my Lord. M ministers, Servants of God, the cross the Lord has asked to call us to carry may not be light all the time, but all the same, the Lord said we should carry it joyfully. We should continue joyfully, carry the cross joyfully. Because the apostle said, I became all things to all men, that I might by all means win some. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jew. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without the law, as without the law. Be not without law to God, but under the law of Christ, that I might gain them that are without the law. Brethren, the devil want to build walls, barriers between us and the seekers. They want to look, we want to look at their culture, the way they dress, the way they talk. The way they do their things, that is not the way they do. But Jesus Christ wants us to look beyond that and take the gospel to them and say, we are prepared to reach them at their own. If they will not come to, we'll go to them. We are prepared to reach them at where they are, at their level, to operate at their level so that we can bring them to where Christ wants them to be. That's what Paul was saying. And that's what our Father in the Lord has been striving to do. We cannot allow our traditions, we cannot allow our personal persuasion to stand between us and establishing the believers in the faith. Paul the Apostle said, I will spend and be spent so that you can become who you ought to be in the Lord. I will prepare to spend and be spent so that the young believers, the young converts can become what they ought to be in Christ. Let's pray and talk to the Lord. Let's we recommit ourselves, dedicate ourselves unto the Lord. That brethren, we need to remember that the, the, the apostles that the Lord has placed over us is doing everything. He's doing striving in, all things, in, in, in difficulties, in stress, in, in situations that are adverse to make sure that the gospel gets to the community. Let's pray that, oh God, this price that has been paid, that people will become converted, will not be in vain. Let's pray and say, Lord, I see what my leader is doing. I see what my apostle is doing. I am, want to follow in his full step. I want to follow him as he follows Christ. I want to obey the word as he seeks to obey the word. I want to carry out the commission as he seeks to carry out the commission. We will do everything within our power. 
We'll do everything within our strength to make sure that these people become born again. Let's tell, tell the Lord that, oh God, I will do everything. I will strive. I will do all that all may be saved. Must make up our mind that as, as believers in the kingdom, as workers in the kingdom, we respond to the truth of the word of God that we are being told, taught. We will respond to, positively to it. We are not just hearers only, but we are doers as well. We do it at enthusiasm. We do it with commitment. We make up our mind that whatever it will cost us, we are going to obey the teaching of the world. We are going to be a reflection. Our life is going to be a reflection of the teaching of the world. Let's talk to the Lord. Let's speak to the Lord and say, God, help me. Help me that I will not just be a nominal worker or a nominal believer. I want to make a difference. Paul made a difference. Our Father in the Lord is making a difference. Our overseers are making a difference. Why should we not be like our fathers? Like father, like son. Why not, should we not be so? Let's make, up our, make a commitment unto the Lord this day. And say, Lord, I am going to stand in the face of temptation. Paul said, and my temptation which was in my flesh, ye despise not nor rejected, but received me as an angel, even as Christ Jesus. You looked away from my infirmities. You looked away from my, from my limitations. You saw Christ in me. You saw when I come, came before you, it was like Christ was before you. Why not let's pray that we'll honor our leaders, we'll honor their words as the words of Christ, that when we teach the word of God and the conviction from the word of God, we'll not go back and put it aside, or will not compare it with the words of uninspired men. We will not compare what they are saying with the words of uninspired women. But we will say, this is the word of the Lord. This is what God is saying to me in this hour. I am prepared to do it. I am going to do it. I don't, it doesn't matter.